When seeing a photo like this, you likely think it is shot with an expensive camera and perhaps wonder what camera was used. You may be surprised by the fact that it was shot by a small action camera like the GoPro camera that easily fits into a shirt pocket with a weight similar to a battery for a large camera. Many have probably been dazzled by the stunt action videos of the GoPro but are unaware of its potential for shooting surprisingly good, truly high dynamic range photos and real HDR time-lapse videos like demonstrated in this video. Being interested in this video, you probably own a GoPro camera. If you want to shoot HDR photos like this, then this how to do it video should be of interest to you. Or perhaps you want to shoot stunning HDR time-lapse videos in 4K or ultra high definition with your GoPro camera. In that case, this video should help you get going. Part one of this video series shows you HDR photos and time-lapse videos uh, shot with an unlocked GoPro in comparison to the same camera operated in a regular photo and time-lapse photo mode. This second part shows you how to unlock the full potential of the GoPro by opening the door and safely tapping into its firmware without changing the firmware and controlling it using a smartphone. This enables amazing HDR photos and time-lapse videos to be shot. The instructions are here given both verbally and by text. Accordingly, you may like to pause or replay parts of the video so you do not miss sections where the instruction may be more intense. This video was downloaded in a 4K ultra high definition format to get the best view of the examples. If your internet setup allows you 4K video resolution, you may like to switch to 4K YouTube video mode now. Okay, so let's get started. Here's what you need. First, a GoPro camera, of course. The best results you get with a model shooting 4K video like the GoPro 4 Black. Secondly, you need an Android phone. Don't be discouraged if you are an iPhone user. You can use a pretty old Android phone since it only needs to run Android version 2.1 or later, which is pretty old. You can easily get such a used phone for about $40. The phone does not need to work with your carrier but must be able to run Wi-Fi so you can connect to the Google Play Store. Getting such a phone may well be the most powerful and cost-effective accessory for your GoPro if you're really interested in shooting amazing HDR photos and HDR time-lapse videos. Thirdly, you need to go to the Google App Store and download and install the incredibly versatile app called Basic with the well-justified exclamation mark appended to its name. It's all for free. Fourthly, you need to download two programs written for the Basic app, also for free. You get them from the large computer code sharing site GitHub in the repository named GoPro HDR Unlocked by Phone. Note, running these programs are completely safe. They will not change the firmware or harm your smartphone in any way. So how can you be sure? Well, primarily because I'm the only GitHub user who has right access to this particular GitHub repository. You should get uh, these two programs only from my GitHub repository. Also, you can read the code of these two programs and so nothing is hidden from you or what the programs are doing. This is in contrast to the regular Android and iPhone apps where you are blinded then largely work based on beliefs and trust. So all in all, this is a pretty attractive approach financially that's not going to cost you much. And as you will see from this video, you can get fun new ways to produce amazing things with your GoPro that perhaps is not being used much anymore. So what is the basic app all about? Why do I need it? What is it doing? The basic app is an app that allows you to produce computer code in a specific computer language, namely a specific, very powerful dialect of the basic programming language. Wait, wait, do not quit now. Please listen carefully. 
you do not need to write any computer code or understand computer code at all. Let me repeat, you do not need to write any computer code or understand computer code at all. The computer code you need is already written and ready to be used. The only thing you need to know is that the code you need is contained in the two files you downloaded from GitHub. All you need to know is how to present these two files to the basic app so this app can run the code. This is an extremely simple thing to do as you will see. Now in case you do have some basic understanding of computer coding, let me just say a few words about the basic app before I return to the essential instructions of how to unlock the GoPro to shoot HDR that everybody can follow. So if you are not interested in coding, uh, you may skip the next section and fast forward to the section with the heading Important Considerations When Shooting HDR Time Lapse. The basic app is a wonderful app that in an elegant way it enables you to write basic computer code that will run on your smartphone. It is essentially both a mobile code development platform and a mobile application platform combined that fits right in your pocket. You are not bound to a laptop or a desktop computer for your code development. So neat, especially if you are traveling. The basic language is also simpler to read and code than most other languages. The built-in program editor is practical, simple and works very well. The many supplied example programs are very handy and get you up running learning the language very quickly. But more than anything else, where the basic app really shines is its many interface functions that in a simple way can control many of the built-in functions of Android phones. The one particular feature of the basic app that makes it particularly suitable for controlling the GoPro is the ability to deal with UILs and HTML through a Wi-Fi connection. This is due to internet browsing functionality. That feature in combination with the smartphone mobility and the simplicity of the basic language is very useful. The combination of this app, the GoPro and the Android phone is a match made in heaven when you want to quickly develop code for controlling the GoPro. Allow me to digress for a moment and substantiate that with an example. The code provided here contained in the two files you download from GitHub was written in airports and on airplanes on my way to Iceland. I completed the codes while busy traveling around this amazing island to have some fun using my GoPro baby in between other filming. The fact that I could complete the code so quickly without having any prior coding experience would basic attest to the incredible quality of the work of Paul Lawton in producing the basic app. This is truly a gigantic contribution, all provided for free with such generosity. Thanks Paul. No more digressing code talk. Let's get back to more practical how to do it matters. First, we need to go a bit behind the scene to see what goes on when shooting HDR. This will help you understand the limitations and constraints that you need to know about to avoid non-workable situations. You want to know how to make corrections if your GoPro starts behaving in a weird way. There are two types of HDR photos, namely simulated HDR and true HDR. Simulated HDR is generated from a single exposure and is essentially a filter emphasizing and de-emphasizing the various pixel colors. The end result is typically an artificial, unrealistic and often weird looking image. A true HDR photo is instead created from two or more typically three photos with different exposures. 
For example, as seen here, you may have a so-called bracketed exposure consisting of three shots. The middle or second exposure may be the normal exposure, while the first exposure may be a greater exposure with more light hitting the sensor, while the last may be the lesser exposure. In the subsequent HDR processing, the three images are superimposed and combined after inadequate pixels are discarded. That is, pixels representing mostly noise due to insufficient light, or pixels having reached a maximum light intensity or saturation level, not representing a higher light intensity in the scene that is not possible to measure properly with the image sensor at the given exposure level. Shooting true HDR as discussed in this video is much better than simulated HDR. True HDR provides much more flexibility in generating HDR with the special expressions and impressions that you try to reach in your photos and time-lapse video. Don't be fooled to believe that some of the time-lapse videos you see on internet claim to be HDR necessarily are true HDR. Also, watch out for software claiming to produce HDR time-lapse videos from your regular time-lapse recordings. It simply cannot be true HDR. When you shoot true HDR time-lapse video with your GoPro, you will repeatedly shoot a bracketed exposure sequence consisting of three individual shots with different exposures. One such bracketed exposure sequence is illustrated here. Each such set of three exposures will later be processed into a single HDR image. Each repetition of shooting a bracketed exposure sequence will produce a single HDR image. The individual HDR images later stitched together chronologically results in a final HDR time-lapse video. The basic code that you run on your Android phone determines how far from each other the individual three shots in the bracketed sequence are spaced. This is a compromised situation. Ideally, these three exposures should be as close as possible to avoid motion blur between the exposures. However, if spaced too close together, there will not be enough time to complete one exposure to be ready for the next exposure. This will be more of a problem when shooting with only little light because the GoPro will prolong the individual exposures in that case. The basic program tried to avoid this timing conflict in the way the individual bracketed shots are spaced. Besides determining the spacing between the individual three shots in the bracketed exposure sequence, the basic code also controls the frequency of such sequences of three shots. In other words, the spacing between the start of each sequence, which is also the distance between the first shot in each sequence. This distance is the time-lapse interval in the time-lapse video. The length of this time-lapse interval is also a compromise. If it is too long, then there's too much movement in between each HDR image, which can result in a jumpy, non-smooth time-lapse video. On the other hand, if the time-lapse interval is too short, then there may not be enough time to complete the three shots in the bracketed exposure sequence. The minimum time lapse interval possible to shoot is illustrated here by the blue bar. You need to be aware of this compromise and limitation when shooting HDR time lapse with your GoPro. Fortunately, you can control this situation and will get help from the basic program. The time lapse interval is calculated by the basic program based on two user-defined input parameters, namely A, the
the desired length of time you want to capture a scene such as a sunset and B the length of time you want the time-lapse video to play back the captured scene. Based on these two user input parameters the basic program then calculates and presents to you the speed increase factor which is the ratio between the scene capture duration and the duration of the scene playback in the time-lapse. If the speed increase factor is too small then there will be a timing conflict. The basic program will then tell you that your two input parameters are invalid and will request you to change them. You need to change them in such a way that you get a larger speed increase factor. This is very simply done by increasing the scene capture time and or decreasing the time-lapse playback time. To start with, uh, you may try to work with a speed increase factor of about 400. This factor uh, you would get, for example, by choosing 20 minutes recording, which is 1200 seconds and a 3 second playback. You will of course get the same speed increase factor if you change each timing parameter the same way, for example doubling them. Therefore, 40 minutes recording and 6 second playback will give you the same speed increase factor as 20 minutes recording and 3 seconds playback. So you see you get quite a lot of flexibility in these two timing parameters. So let's get started with instructions. Uh, the procedure for getting HDR photos and HDI time-lapse with your GoPro is very simple involving seven steps as given here. You can follow this procedure every time you shoot HDI assuming the following. Number one, you have initialized the GoPro as a Wi-Fi device by giving it a name and a password as described in the GoPro manual. That only need to be done once. Number two, it's assumed that you have changed the settings of the GoPro to the particular photo settings suitable for shooting HDR. Number three, it's assumed that you have done a Wi-Fi pairing of your GoPro and phone so they know how to communicate. That Wi-Fi pairing only need to be done once if it is assumed number four that you do not Wi-Fi connect your GoPro to any other Wi-Fi device or programs in between your HDI shooting sessions. If the latter is not true, then you need to again go through a Wi-Fi pairing procedure which is quite cumbersome and certainly one of the weaker points of the GoPro camera. With these seven very simple steps, uh, you should be ready to go. Assuming you know how to initialize your GoPro camera as a Wi-Fi device and know how to pair your GoPro with other Wi-Fi devices. If you do not know how to do that uh, or run into problems, uh, you can get further help in part 3 of this YouTube series that gives detailed instructions.